Hello everyone, we're coming at you today from the Flowing Fountain Ministries led by Pastor Dale Fountain. So we're here with you at the fountain. Um, we're so thankful for Pastor Dale and his ministry that reaches out to families in need in the Orlando area. Um, whenever you can, if the Lord leads you, please support this ministry. It's so essential. We are so thankful for what Pastor Dale is doing in this community. So we want to share with you today a word that the Lord gave me. Uh, to share in this time, I believe it's very timely, and um, I just wanted to, to share it with you through this meeting, as the Lord uh, has led us to do this. So let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, the rock of our salvation, Lord, and we ask you, Father, that you will bless this time, O oh Lord, and that you will use me, O oh Lord, to spread your word, Lord. That your word and not my word will be said here today, O oh Lord, that your message will reach those that you intend to reach, O oh Lord, with your word, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity, O oh Lord, to be used by you, O oh Lord, to serve you, to love you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord, for your blood. Please cleanse me, O oh Lord, and use me. Let your spirit fill me, O oh Lord, and use me today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you today about pride. Um, pride is... Uh, it's being celebrated right now in the month of June uh, around the world. Uh, people are celebrating Pride as a celebration of uh, uh, homosexuality, gay, lesbians, LGBTQ, I don't know how, however many letters they have now to describe it really. Um, but I want to talk to you about Pride and what the Bible says about Pride itself. Um, pride is not from, from God. Pride is actually something that the Lord will stand against. Um, but He will help the humble, the Bible says. So, the Bible says, tells us that for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. This is 1 John 2.16, that was the King James Version um, that I just read for you there. Um, so pride is, uh, is not from God. The Lord didn't give us the spirit of pride. When we have to come to the Lord, we need to come to the Lord with humility. We need to die to ourselves and humbly come before His throne, His throne of mercy. And he will forgive us. He will take us in as his children. He will take us in as his adopted children by the blood of Jesus. The original sin actually is pride. When we look at the, that's, that, that story in the Bible in Genesis 3, um, we know the serpent was in the garden and Eve was in the garden and when we go down to Genesis 3 5 the serpent is deceiving um, Eve but what does he use to deceive her is this tool of pride he says for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened it's referring to eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which they were commanded not to eat from. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Notice he said, you will be like God. The serpent inserts this concept of pride. You will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Basically promising them a certain type of wisdom, power, like they will be they will not be just mere humans, they will be like God. And that is the same sin, the same sin nature, the root of our sin even today. That sin that we're born with, that pride, that idea that we can stand on our own and, and on our own efforts and accomplishments and stand to be you know recognized and admired and, and worshipped in a sense as idols so we make idols of ourselves 
and uh, that pride is, is opposite to the Lord. It stands in opposition to the Lord. Because as I said earlier, you have to come to the Lord with humility. Only when you come to Him with humility and accept Him as Lord, then He becomes your Lord. The origin of pride is found to be in Satan. Satan is the father of pride. When we read Ezekiel 28, I want to read 16 through 17. Uh, the verses before this are describing Satan and how he was before his fall, adorned with uh, jewels and so on and so forth. And in 28, Ezekiel 28, 16, 17, it says, By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed all covering Sherah, referring to Satan in his prior position before his fall as a Sherah, from the mists of the fiery stones. It means that before his fall, Satan was actually close to the throne of God. Your heart was lifted up, meaning filled with pride, because of your beauty. He said that. Satan, when he was Lucifer, was one of the most beautiful angels. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground, I laid you before kings, that they might gaze at you. That's Ezekiel 28, 16 to 17. So we see that the first one that had pride in his heart was Satan. So whenever you feel that pride arising in your heart you have to know and understand that that is not from the Lord the spirit of pride is not from God it is from Satan the father of pride so we are not to follow that spirit of pridefulness we are to remain humble die to ourselves and follow the Lord Jesus in the way he wishes to lead us Now, sometimes, not sometimes, but the Bible describes now people who are wicked as being through the pride, as, as being like this. It says in Psalms 10:4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. That pridefulness separates us from God. It makes us try to do things on our own, you know, glorify our own efforts, seek our own way, our own interests, our own will. And through that, we're separated from the Lord. We're left to our own devices to follow our own will. And as the Bible described here, the wicked, through the pride of the countenance, they don't seek God. We don't seek God if we are looking after pride. When we are too proud and full of ourselves. And right now, with this um, pride movement, uh, we see that that is happening. Um, these people are standing up prideful because of their sin with pride of being against the way the Lord created them to be. With pride against what the Bible says about morality and immorality. And proud to make their own rules and live by them. And inevitably living by by your own will will only lead to eternal damnation so the thing about it is that Jesus Christ he is so merciful that even though we have stood rightfully against him in our rebellion 
He is a very merciful God. He is full of mercy and grace and love for His creation. And if we turn ourselves around and come back to Him and say, Father, forgive me, I have sinned against you. He is quick to forgive. He is slow to anger, but quick to forgive. In Exodus 24, 6, 6 through 7, I'm going to read. Moses asked the Lord to show him his glory. And the Lord says, the word says this. The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation. So what the Bible is telling us here is the Lord is the Lord is full of mercy and compassion and forgiveness. He forgives our iniquities, our rebellion, our sin. But he's also warning us here. He does not excuse the guilty. If you remain on your guilt, if you don't turn back to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me, your guilt will remain in you. But to those who follow after the Lord, to them there is no condemnation. To them who follow after the Spirit of the Lord, His Spirit of grace, to them there is no condemnation. But to those who follow after the flesh, there is damnation. So, I encourage you today, if you have, you know, stood in your own pride, in whichever shape it takes in, in your case, my case may be a, a certain manifestation of pride, in your case may be a different manifestation of pride, all the same, I encourage you to humble yourself and come before the Lord. Maybe... There's no better time than the present to do that. Even right now, we can come to the Father. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, we come before you, Lord, with repentance in our hearts to ask you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Out of your mercy and grace, Lord, you who have unfailing love. To, to you I pray, Lord, and ask. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us, Lord, and fill us with your Spirit, O oh Lord. Fill us with your Spirit that we will no longer follow the Spirit of pride, but follow you, Lord Jesus. Fill us with a spirit of humility and power and self-control. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you died and you paid in full for all of our sins. That whosoever will turn to you, you will grant forgiveness, Lord. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us your Son, Jesus, to wash away the sins of the world. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit, for this time today that we have to share the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ, His mercy, and the salvation that is found there. Thank you. I hope this word finds you well and, and that it penetrated your heart and, and life, and that it will change your life. And uh, so thank you for, for listening.
God bless you.